Good afternoon. Thank you, Uncle, for passing over to me. I'd like to thank Mr. Tian Lim for inviting me over. Couldn't be happier being here. Hardly anyone calls me to speak. They are afraid of offending the government. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to start on the topic of accountability in Singapore. And this accountability issue is not something that is of today. Hi, Tess. No, this is fine. Yeah, I'm good. Either works, right? Uh, okay. This issue of accountability is not something that it is of just a past last year or this year, especially with all the NS men deaths, the uh, full-time national service men's deaths due to the accident and, and all. It is also a matter of accountability of laws passed, past laws passed maybe in the last... 15 years, the last 20 years, like what um, uh, earlier uh, Uncle Kwan mentioned, you need to uh, like pass abortion laws. So similarly, the first issue on accountability I would like to hit out on was passing laws to legalize casinos in Singapore. Was that good? They promised us jobs that when they built the uh, MBS and RWS, where are the jobs? Where is the accountability for what they promised us? Instead, we had more problems, social problems, gambling problems and debt. People ended up in gambling debt. So where is the accountability since then? For further after... Further on, after the uh, casino issue, they promised us loads of stuff. They promised us, um, even in the, back in the 90s, asset enhancement. Anyone remembers that? The HDB. Where has that got us? The next generation is very expensive. A cost of a flat is easily within the 300,000 to the 400,000 of Sing dollars. Uh, a good 30 years mortgage to pay it off. 30 years. There's no accountability in, or a lack of accountability on that as well. So seriously, where is any form of accountability? I, I leave the floor open to you guys. Any accountability? <laughs> All right. And f further, furthermore, uh, uh, another issue is GST, after the HDB is GST. They promised us in 2015 that there would be no increases in GST just before the elections. And after getting a good 70% of the vote, they are reconsidering increasing GST for social spending. So there is no accountability on how they are spending public funds. I, I would like to put it this way. There's no such thing as public funds. There's only taxpayers' funds. It has got to come from somewhere. So either they get it from income tax, um, they get it off GST, or they get it off some form of tax. Uh, I mean, they, they tell us that we are paying the lowest tax in Singapore. Maybe the lowest direct taxes. But how about indirect taxes? Everyone has to eat. Everyone has to buy. Uh, everyone has to drink. So food and water, there's GST on them. You're paying GST for your consumptions. You have to travel. So uh, if you're taking, uh, if you're taking like Grab, if you're taking, so these services as well, GST, uh, road tax, you, you have to travel. So it's not like you don't own a car, you don't pay road tax. You're paying indirectly through ERP, through if you take a cab, through uh, if you're, you're taking a Grab or a Gojek. So there is a lot of hidden taxes that we are paying. I'd like to bring everyone's attention to that. Hidden taxes. We are paying a lot and we are paying through our nose. <laughs> but really, who has benefited? Who has benefited from all this? It's the big multinationals, not the ordinary Singaporeans. Not the honest, decent, hard-working Singaporeans. In fact, we are being milked every, all day, every day, and it's getting worse for more resources, for more finance. They are getting, eventually, we are getting less for paying more as time goes by. You, you can find that uh, even starting a business, I mean, not just the uh, people who are working, wages have been stagnating, but costs have been creeping up. Even starting a business, as I uh, was saying, 
there is rent, the cost of rental, the cost of electricity. So the basic necessities of food, water, electricity, we are paying taxes on them. Lack of accountability, no accountability. Look at water, the price keeps going up. <laughs> they, they keep telling that uh, we have abundance of uh, water that we can even sell treated water to Malaysia. But we are still paying expensive water. We are. What I would like uh, to give is, um, uh, like just what Uncle Kwan mentioned, the three branches of um, the, the three branches of government of the executive, the legislature, and uh, the judiciary. One of the the things which I would like to add on to the uh, to make it like the sort of the fourth is direct democracy. Who would like a referendum to vote on issues? We should have. Referendums. The biggest referendum by far in the world was in 2016. Anyone knows about Brexit? Against the odds of uh, the big banks, the multinationals, the corporations, the British people made they, uh, the British people made their views across through the ballot box, through the vote, not through protests, not through bloodshed or riot, through the votes. So we should have referendums on maybe, uh, should we raise GST? We should have referendums on even, uh, should we have a reserve presidency? And all these loads and loads of stuff, there is no accountability. The, the end of the day, where the Singaporeans are not being accounted to, just like a, uh, in a company, the CEO is not a bo the boss. The directors maybe might have bigger shareholdings, but end of the day, the shareholders are the biggest boss, and, and we are the shareholders. Each and every one of us are the shareholders uh, to Singapore. So there must be accountability to us. Uh, there's more issues on lack of accountability. Anyone heard of this um, ASEAN scholarship? <laughs> They would like to give scholars... Uh, I mean, it started out as a fantastic idea. It started out. But if you think about it from a fundamental point of view, why is it such a failure and there was lack of accountability? Our neighbours would like to come to NUS, NTU or our universities, but who exactly would like to go to Malaysian, Indonesian or Brunei universities, Singaporeans going there? It's one way. So it is bound to fail. Similarly, with the CECA uh, agreement with India, they promised us a big market. The market is opening up to Singaporean investments in India. But if you thought about it, it is one way. Who exactly goes there to work our, uh, any opportunities to, for our citizens? No. They came here and depressed our wages. <laughs> so lack of accountability. The, so the issues we are having right now is not with the immigrants, but with our government. Our government are the ones that are giving, um, are, are just selling us off bits and pieces, little by little, to the multinationals. It's pretty funny, actually. With uh, this year, we had we celebrated the 200 years bicentennial uh, elections. They were talking a lot about the British, a lot about the UK, but they left the recent history of Brexit out. They left that out conveniently because they do not want a public revolt. They do not want people to vote against whatever policies they have in mind. It has become a one-way ticket. They say we have to accept anything without questions. That is all that they think. So that is one issue that we brought up. And in fact, uh, Brexit was a good thing. We have got the multinationals of Dyson. They are coming back to Singapore. The Navy as well. We would have more business to do. But let's just hope the opportunities actually goes to Singaporean and not, uh, uh, not a repeat of the casino saga where our jobs were given out to uh, EP pass holders, S pass holders. Uh, on this part, it's pretty funny. They are clamping down on work permit. They've got the whole equation wrong and again, no accountability. On, on, on accountability, I, I would say that it's, it's very easy to point fingers to our government, but each of us, the Singaporeans, have to be accountable for their actions or their lack of it. Remember, it was 70% of Singaporeans who put them in power, who put the current government in power. They voted for the PAP. So the Singaporeans have to be accountable if they want 
their government to be accountable. As you can see from my cap and from my T-shirt, I'm inspired by world events, by Brexit, by President Trump's winning. They said 98% that Hillary Clinton would be president, but that didn't happen, thank goodness. So, I, I, to be honest, I was happy at 2011 what happened with the, the first GRC falling off, but I, wasn't, I was pretty upset at 2015. But at, from 2016 to now, world events, we just hope it reaches Singapore from Brexit, from President Trump's election, the Italian elections, um, uh, German elections, and even our neighbours, our neighbours who have voted out a government they had for 60 years, they have made a difference. When will be our term? When? It's a matter of time. I hope. I hope. But seriously, we didn't even fill our park up to the, to the brim. So I am worried uh, that the, the message, the writing on the wall, which has been, never has been clearer at any given point of our history, it has to reach the ordinary Singaporean, the decent Singaporean, the hardworking Singaporeans. Uh, that if this group of people, we Singaporeans, if there is a will, even mountains will move. <laughs> We've got to reach out to close to about 2.6 million eligible Singaporean voters on the, uh, on the registers right now, uh, as of now. And it is, the job, uh, it is the job and duty of each and every one of us to to talk about these issues at our workplace, talk about these issues in the society, in the community, with your neighbours, with your family, with your friend, to make sure that the, uh, the message reaches out. And <laughs> because we are up against the media, we are up against uh, the mainstream newspapers and, uh, and stuff. And even th there has been clams on Facebook's, uh, uh, Facebook and social media and stuff. So it is up to us to go old school, to talk to people, to convince as many people to actually vote for change, to take back control of our destinies, to make Singapore for Singaporeans again. So I've I've been I've been given uh, time for two minutes. I'll be wrapping up uh, shortly. All right, and we we really need a swing vote. Uh, given the current situation of uh, seventy thirty, we need a good swing vote of about twenty to twenty five percent. We need help of each of every one of you who turned up today, as well as those who are watching this online. For those who are, uh, who, who are not here today, we need the help of supporters, we need the help of each and every one of you to make sure the message reaches the, the everyday Singaporean, anyone who has a pink IC, who is eligible to vote at the next elections to make a change. And of course, we want to give um, not absolute power on, on representational democracy like what we have right now. Rep representational democracy has a flaws. 70% uh, people voted for the PAP but they did not vote for cost to raise. They did not vote for uh, wages to be depressed. They did not vote for water and electricity prices, uh, transport prices, food prices, basic cost of necessity prices to increase. We did not vote for that. But this is what uh, voting for the PAP through a uh, representative democracy has done. So we need some direct democracy. Thank you. Let's, let's be accountable to each and every one of us. Let's vote for change. Thank you.